Let me get the music. as we begin all things, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The, Spirit. the waters of baptism died with Christ, and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him each one of them. walk our brother into the church. Good morning again. It's a pleasure to be and serve to you as a priest, but in this particular day to be an Irish priest, it feels even better. In these very, very difficult days, um, we just want you to know that the church is here with you, to guide you, to be with you, to pray with you, as we pray for the repose of the soul of a good man. So as we gather together today, let's just call to mind ourselves and, and place, place ourselves in the presence of our Lord. And we pray. Almighty God, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Jack, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I can now ask Madeline to come up and help us with the reading.
with your spirit. Glory to you, O Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. On behalf of Alberta, Jackie, Janet, Eddie, Christina, and their families, for those not able to be with us here, We'd like to express how grateful we are that you are here to support them during this difficult time. And today is a difficult day. But in the face of our loss, the church has confidently proclaimed that God created each person for eternal life. That Jesus, the Son of God, by his death and resurrection, has broken the chains of sin and death. The mystery of the Lord's death and resurrection gives power to all the church's activity. Today, we come together as a covenantal family, as a church, to pray for the repose of the soul of our brother in Christ. For just as the physical body of Christ was crucified and buried, and afterward raised up, so in the same way the church's faithful servants have been crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, and will rise up. St. Paul teaches us that we have been baptized into his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb and joined in death with him. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might have new life. So if, union, if we are in union with Christ in imitating his death, we shall also imitate him in the resurrection. Jesus, the Son of God, gives us hope. It is a hope that ran through Jack's life, a man of faith. Jack was a man who believed in God. Jesus asked us to go out and proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, in both word and action. And as a Christian man, Jack chose this path. His Catholic faith is where his hope emanated from, a hope that inspired him to great things, like becoming a husband, a father, a grandfather. At the death of a Christian, the church intercedes on their behalf because it is confident that death no longer is the end, nor does it break the bonds forged in life. Christians celebrate the funeral rites to offer worship, praise, and thanksgiving to God for the gift of life, which has now been returned to God. To a Christian, the two most important days of our lives are our baptism and our death, which is why Jack is clothed in white. These are the days in which we are conjoined with God, and when Jack gets his moment in front of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Lord says to him, Jack, I gave you life. What have you done for me? I imagine Jack looking at Jesus and saying, Alberta, Jackie, 
Janet, Eddie, Christina, and the grandchildren. His pride and joy. And can't you just imagine the smile that will come across our Lord's face? Well done, good and faithful son. Well done. Family. Life's greatest blessing. A group that dreams, laughs, plays, and loves together. Always present, not just in the good times. Those to whom we can always count on. Life's precious gift. What we fall in love with shows you who you are. And his family is who he was in love with, precious to him. He and Alberta were married for 56 years, his constant companion. He grew up in the coal country of southern Iowa, so he learned early the value of hard work in order to achieve what you want. That work ethic enabled him to achieve success at Firestone, where he worked for 37 years as a tire builder. It was a success that went much further than money. Jackie shared a story with me, with me the other day in which she had baked some cookies to bring to Jack for his birthday at the, the factory. Only she was denied entry by security. She was told that they do not allow those things in the factory. Seeing the reaction in her face, the security guard asked, who are these for? When she told him Jack Morrissey, he said, come on in. He said that he's a nice man, a good man. It is a beautiful example of how Jack carried himself and how we can all make a difference in the world by how we treat others. He was a likable man, and a gentleman, a man who always put others first, always driving the oldest car because he wanted to make sure that the children in Alberta had the newer ones. In today's scripture readings, we come to understand that God, in his providence, appointed a time for everything, a time for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born and, yes, a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. But because, as St. Peter tells us, that God in his great mercy gave us new life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, there is actually cause for rejoicing. Yes, he says that we may have to suffer the distress of many trials. Jack fought the good fight. He finished the race of never-failing faith. Because as we read in St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, that the Lord, the Lord stood by his side. And that gave Jack strength. A strength that allowed him to preach the gospel with his life. He built the home on a foundation, on the rock of his Catholic faith. Having Christ as our foundation doesn't promise us freedom from life's trials. Just knowledge that we will not be alone in them. But in the end, when we hold true to our belief, our faith in Jesus, we can rejoice with inexpressible joy. In the gospel today, we heard a reading from Matthew that many Christians described as the greatest sermon ever given, the Sermon on the Mount, where we encounter today's reading on the Beatitudes. It is familiar to many of us. Jesus took his followers up the mountain to teach them. Beatitudes translates to happiness. So Jesus is telling us that he is unveiling the path to true happiness to his disciples, that if we choose to live within these teachings, we will find happiness. That we are fortunate, lucky, happy, not to be preoccupied with non-material things, which allows us to concentrate on others. This Jack did. He was occupied with, his, with building a family. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Our happiness comes in the measure to which one hands over their life to the will of God. Avoiding the blocks and the obsessions of the material world, Jack was preoccupied with his family. With Alberta, his spirit was being given away to charity to those whom he loved. Blessed are they who mourn and weep, for they will be comforted. While God wants us to be happy, 
the existence of suffering and sorrow are, are unfortunately a part of life. Emotional happiness, while a wonderful gift, is not the ultimate good. To know the will of God is the ultimate happiness. Wherever, wherever or whoever we love, although we lose them, healing happens. It may not always come in the form that we are looking for, but it is there. Blessed are they who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Meaning, blessed are they who are not caught up in the quest for power or the desire for control. How lucky they are not to be addicted to power, but to know the will of God. There is an understanding of strength in our Catholic definition of meek, in that we come to understand that our strength is derived from knowing the will of God, the value of humility. This Jack understood. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are the per peacemakers. You can see Jack in all of these beatitudes. The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us the desire for God is written in the human heart because man is created by God and for God. And God never ceases to draw man to himself. Only in God will he find the truth and happiness he never stops searching for. Once we realize that God is our end, you begin to see that the joys of marriage, children, sunsets and stars, the seasons, the masterpieces of art and music, the comforts of life are all gifts from God. Life is not strictly a matter of sacrifice, but of right ordering. It is a beautiful gift given us by God through his church. Our sufferings can become agents of transformation towards understanding the will of God, for remembering that we are made for God. Our sufferings can become an opportunity to increase our conversations with God. When Jesus appears with Moses and Elijah on Mount Tabor, the voice of the Father from heaven cries out, this is my son, listen to him. So we too can transform ourselves to the image of Christ and become his hands and feet in the world, as Jack did. My brothers and sisters, let us now stand and present our prayers and petitions to our loving and gracious Father. Our response will be in order of prayer. For Jack, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be amended to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. He raised the dead to life, give to Jack eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, of Our Lady of Perpetual Help and St. Francis, our patron saint. Grant to a family of faith what they ask out of faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Bless you, Lord. God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed be forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Jack, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. 
and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Jack, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of your Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
please kneel or be seated, whatever you're more comfortable with. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ give me safe for eternal life. So we'll have one line for anybody who wishes to receive communion. And if you don't want to receive but still want to come up for a blessing, by all means, you're more than welcome.
And now I invite Eddie to come on up for, to give a couple words.
come running and she would jump off the top of the stack. And then she would dig around in his pockets until she found her gun. He's usually hubba bubba or some, you know, something to rock her teeth. She rarely used to walk around without a gun in her mouth because my dad would bring something every day at work, which is super sweet. And I think even then, as a young kid, I knew that was, you know, that was sweet. That was love when you saw that. And there's little things like that. And if I mention all the stuff, Yeah. 
think because he's gone, uh, first I don't think he wants us to be sad. It's a tough thing uh, when you lose your father and, and a friend, uh, a brother, a sister, or excuse me, a brother. But I think he would not want us to be sad. I think he was always uh, happy, and always joking, and lighthearted. And I don't think that he wants to, to be down. Trusting. Trusting in God. We have prayed together for Jack, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we will see Jack again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
Please stand. Into your hands, Father, our mercies, we commend our brother Jack in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now take our brother to his place of final rest. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.